I'm William Padilla Brown. I'm a multidisciplinary uh, citizen scientist, um, amateur amateur scientist, pretty much, um, and uh, amateur phycologist. So phycology is the study of algae, and uh, today we're here at my little homestead uh, where we're going to be working with spirulina. So. Um, most of what we're going to be doing today is all about spirulina, but some of the information that we're going to be going over can translate into cultivation of other algae. Um, and I'm pretty stoked on that. All right, so here we have my um, starter tanks for my larger culture that we're going to put into the pond. Um, these are in five gallon carboys. I get these from local brewery supply uh, stores, um, really easy to access. Um, and you can see that these are really nice dark green and this one's kind of lighter green. Um, typically for about four to five gallons, um, I'll introduce about a liter of mature culture. So this is what will be considered mature culture. When you have a nice dark green culture, um, you can get tools um, like a sechi uh, disc, um, which is a little target on the end of a ruler that you stick down um, and then there's, it should, um, Within a certain amount of measurement, you shouldn't be able to see the target anymore. Um, and that will show you when your culture density is, is mature. Um, but after doing this so long, I can tell when my culture is at the density that I'd like it to be. Um, so now, now that these are mature, I'm gonna use these to introduce into the larger pond. Um, and anytime I separate these out, I always leave a little bit of culture left in these so I can fill them up again and keep these as backups. Um, I have these on my back uh, porch uh, where they get access to full sunlight all day. Um, you can also start your cultures indoors um, next to a south facing window. You just want to make sure that they have as much light as they can get all day and they need to be warm. So these warm up really nice um, with, the, with the sunlight during the day. Um, so I started these about four or five days ago and this one I just started yesterday. So in about four to five days this one will be... Um, the same culture density as we have here uh, and uh, yeah we're gonna go ahead and rock out with these and um, I'll show you how I make my culture media and uh, we'll get it all set up and rocking in the pond all right guys so um, what we're gonna do is we're going to use this five gallon bucket to create a um, our nutrient mix that we feed the spirulina um, I do most of my measurements based off of uh, five gallons um, I haven't done the math to figure out exactly how much um, water, how many gallons this pond holds. So the first time I fill it up, I'm just gonna fill it up five gallons at a time. But after I know how many five gallon buckets it takes to fill this up, then I'll just be able to fill this up and I'll know the exact nutrient mix that I'm gonna need to put in here. So for a five gallon mix, um, what I always start out with is one cup of baking soda. So this baking soda increases the salinity of the mix which helps deter other organisms from um, living in here, but it also adjusts the pH up fairly high. Um, spirulina, we're gonna wanna cultivate at a pH of 10 or more. Just add a little bit more in there. Um, spirulina is an extremophile, um, which means it can grow in extreme environments where other organisms won't grow, and this makes it one of the most safest algae species to cultivate because the pH that we need to keep it in to cultivate it is higher than most organisms would want to live. Um, the next thing I'm gonna add is my nutrients. I use a vegetative plant nutrient and I use a nutrient salt based nutrient. Um, we have to understand that cyanobacteria evolved before there was uh, the amount of organic nutrient that there is on the planet um, and they evolved around utilizing nutrient salt. Um, if you want to go the route of organic spirulina, um, the one method that I would recommend is setting up a biogas digester and using the liquid effluent from the biogas digester to uh, be your nutrient base. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this um, small teaspoon, this one teaspoon uh, per five gallons of this MaxiGrow um, nutrient mix. And again, vegetative nutrient mix. You don't need uh, a bloom nutrient mix um, because spirulina doesn't really produce fruits or flowers or anything like that. So those nutrients are not necessary. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put one ounce of this Ocean Magic Sea Minerals for the mineral content. So you could grow spirulina with just baking soda, 
Um, it utilizes the sodium bicarbonate as a carbon source, so it can grow with just sodium bicarbonate. But if you want it to be that nutrient powerhouse superfood that it has the potential to be, you're gonna wanna make sure that you add minerals and other nutrients. So again, I'm gonna add one ounce of this Ocean Magic Sea Minerals. Um, and now that I have everything in there, I'm gonna use my hose, um, which at my house I have filtered well water. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a good clean water source. You do not wanna use tap water. Um, if you know that your tap water has chlorine in it, you can uh, let the water sit out for a day before you utilize it. Uh, if it has chloramine in it, then there's other routes that you could take, which I'm not entirely aware of. Uh, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a nice clean, uh, preferably filtered water source or well water or spring water. guys um, we're back here at the spirulina pond um, and this is seven days from the last video when we inoculated the pond and honestly with all the sunlight we've been getting um, this has been ready to harvest for about three days um, and you can see it's really really dark um, so we're gonna get ready for the harvesting process so um, in the pond right now I have a submersible pond pump you can buy these at um, whatever local brewer supply that you have um, and these are hand pumps and these work all right, but it's gonna be a lot of uh, Energy that you're gonna be putting into it when you could just plug in a pump and, and get it to work But they, these work really well if you're harvesting out of five gallon carboys like I have my cultures growing in um, over on the deck area um, We are running this uh, Solar panel here. This is the boulder 50 from goal zero um, I didn't really need that large of a solar panel and it's charging this battery pack. I have back here um, I'm gonna build a little shelter for the battery pack so it stays out of the elements so it doesn't get rained on and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've just been covering this with the tarp if it starts to rain or anything just to make sure I'm uh, keeping it protected. Um, but this solar panel charges up that battery in like six hours I believe in direct sun and that battery can run for a while because I'm only running a really small uh, aquarium pump here. Uh, this is the pump that I'm using to agitate the spirulina pond. Um, if you're not agitating your spirulina pond, um, a lot of the spirulina is just going to stay floating at the top um, and it's not going to get sunlight evenly distributed through the culture. Um, so this is a really nice unit, uh, especially because you want to have your spirulina ponds set up out somewhere sunny, um, which sometimes means that there won't be uh, direct access to a power line. Um, so it's really nice to be able to set up a solar panel um, and pump uh, sun energy through your pond uh, while your pond is collecting sun energy and turning it into uh, nutrients. Um, so I think this is a really cool setup um, so I don't have a bunch of wires running through the yard or anything like that um, and these can easily be set up in parking lots, rooftops, anything like that um, uh, and then you can get your spirulina growing pretty much anywhere. I had rinsed this out prior so there was a little bit of just clean water in there uh, but now you can see this nice green spirulina rich water starting to come through and I run it through a strainer first um, because little bits of debris and um, little bugs and things like that land in the spirulina pond and you can see there's a little buddy right here I'm trying to get in there but um, this strainer just catches any bigger debris before it goes into this 33 micron cloth um, and then you can see the spirulina is already starting to gather here on the cloth and this is what we want so after a while, uh, this is gonna clump up a fair amount and it's not gonna be able to let much water through. Um, at that point, I'll scoop some of this out and put it into a bowl and then I'll continue harvesting. So this might take a while um, and we, pr we should see a pretty significant harvest. And as you can see, the water um, that, that drains out from this spirulina filtering situation goes right back into the pond. So we're saving a lot of water. And 
because we have this cover on, we're not getting too much loss of water from evaporation. Um, so really this is one of the most, um, or one of the least intensive uh, water utilization out of any form of agriculture because um, we're recycling a lot of the water. We barely ever have to top off this water. And if we do, it's mostly just due to evaporation and then the small amount of water that the spirulina takes out with it. All right, so we're down in the lab with our spirulina harvest that we just pulled out of the pond. Um, and one thing that we want to check every time we harvest is uh, look at it under the microscope to see if there's any contamination in there. Uh, we should only see spirals. Um, and if you see anything else, any other little cells or any other different types of algae, um, then it, your culture is contaminated and you're going to want to go back and check the pH and you're definitely not going to want to eat the harvest. Um, if you want to take it a step further to make sure that your spirulina is as safe as it possibly can be, um, either utilize a community lab that has a, a PCR equipment or you can get one of these mini PCR um, setups which isn't too expensive. It's a really great investment to have if you're going to be doing this um, and you can uh, amplify, extract and amplify um, different parts of the DNA um, to see if there's any potential that they're producing any toxins um, and you would be able to do that with the gel uh, electrophoresis and you wouldn't really need to send it in to be sequenced or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get in here with this syringe and I'm going to pull out some of the watery areas because I'm going to need some of that water. And it's just going to be like a lot of spirals. I'm going to try and get some more of the watery area. And we're just going to put a couple drips onto this little slide. That's enough. And put the slide cover on. And we're going to check this spirulina under the microscope to make sure there's no contamination. All right, so we got our spirulina harvest. Um, the next step that we're gonna do before we can eat it is we're gonna rinse it. Um, and uh, when you harvest it out, it's still covered in the sodium bicarbonate from the pond, so it's gonna be a little salty and there might be some excess nutrient salt on it. Um, so we're just gonna give it a quick little rinse with cold water. You're gonna wanna use clean filtered water, non-chlorinated water, especially if you're gonna eat it fresh. Um, if you use chlorinated water, it will kill the cells. So if you want it to be like a living food, um, you're going to need to use unchlorinated water. So we have a RO water that comes out of the tap here from the well. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and give it a nice rinse. Make sure you're using cold water. Um, again, if you use hot water, then it'll kill some of the spirulina. Then you just let it drain and you'll move on to the next step where you press out the water. All right, so uh, we have our juice press here and typically this is what I use to dewater the spirulina. Uh, but unfortunately during my move, I uh, misplaced one of the parts uh, that the spirulina would actually go into. So I don't have that right now, uh, but this is a really nice tool. Um, you keep the spirulina in the screen or in the um, filter cloth and then you just press this through and water will come out. Really great tool. Um, also, if you want to dry your spirulina, this is another great tool to have. Um, this is a noodle extruder. So people would typically put dough in here um, and then you press it through and noodles come out the bottom. Um, so if you want to uh, dehydrate your spirulina, once you press the water out, uh, you'll put it in here and then you'll press it through into noodles onto a drying screen or a rack uh, for drying out in the sun or whatever you need. Um, so I don't use that this I don't use this that often because I typically eat my spirulina fresh and I prefer to freeze it fresh and then just use it that way. All right, because I don't have my uh, piece that I need for the juice press, I'm going to just press this by hand. Um, so I'm going to just keep it in this filter screen and I'm just going to start pressing it. 
You're going to notice that after you press some of this water out that the water is going to start coming out green. Um, some of the spirulina will come through the screen, but that's okay. Uh, you just want to get as much water out as you can. The amount of spirulina that comes out is very insignificant to the amount that's in there. Whatever spirulina I don't use right away, I just stuff it into a Ziploc bag and you can stuff these pretty full. Um, and then I just throw it in the freezer and uh, whenever I need some, I'll just go in there and snap a piece off, throw it in a smoothie or snap a piece off, let it thaw out, put it in some food. Um, you can totally cook with it. Um, definitely stay tuned to the channel. I'm gonna post some other really cool videos on uh, how you can cook with spirulina in a more gourmet fashion and maybe get this into the hands of some of my chef friends and see what they do with it. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. You know, I really want to get the word out there for more people, uh, get more people growing spirulina, more people eating spirulina, and uh, you know, kind of change the world and get people nourished, get those brains moving, and all that good stuff. So yeah, practical psychology. Uh, William Padilla Brown, and this has been the Spirulina Mini Doc.